Welcome to this episode of Let's Talk, where we zoom in on the practical implications and the next steps of the bigger sessions here in the Milan Congress. And in this episode, we are talking about full arch reconstructions, the surgical approach, and when is it time to keep the dentition? My name is Gerrit Heikop, and I'm very happy and proud to be joined by the chairs of this session here at the Congress. Ignacio Sanz Sanchez from Spain. Ignacio, welcome. Hi, Gerrit. And on my other side is Jose Manuel Navarro from the UK, although with some Spain Spanish UK. roots as yes. well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gentlemen, very welcome. You just come walking out of, uh, from the stage. Um, let's start with the very basics. We're in, in an implantology congress. Full arch reconstructions, it says. It's, it's the complex situation. Yet the title is, when is it time to keep the dentition? Ignacio, why do we need to talk about this topic here in this Congress? I think it's important to realize that uh, as dentists, we need to face one of the most prevalent diseases in humans. These are caries and periodontitis. And as they advance, the strategic decision to keep the dentition or to extract the remaining teeth and replace them by implants may come to yeah. our clinics and, and we need to, to make the choice. Exactly. We need to make the choice. But that's so far nothing new, right? Because Absolutely. we talk about the latest science in here. Jose, where is the dilemma here? The dilemma really comes because there are a lot of what we would consider over treatments that are being done globally. And I have to say it is more of an American thing than European, although we do see it to some extent here. We have uh, dental chains that advocate for full extractions of teeth, oftentimes very healthy teeth that could have been perfectly salvaged for many years, maybe even forever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and these teeth are replaced by dental implants that uh, might not last so long for once, but moreover, they're really not the right treatment for this type of patient. So the ethical issues around it were very well discussed in the session today. Exactly. So you were dealing, we might be dealing or you're alarming our community for a risk of overtreatment. You say the ethical discussion, you actually had an ethical or an ethicist talking. Dominic Cross from Germany was in your session. What, what, what is the key ethical dilemma here that the dentists need to get aware of? There are several dilemmas. Uh, the first is evidence-based dentistry ah. and evidence-based implantology because our treatments need to be based on evidence. And we have the evidence for long-term results for period treatment, for root canal treatment, for caries treatment, but still we don't have long-term evidence for the treatment of implant complications. So I think we oh, should- Wait a second, so for implant complications, so because implant therapy is, is, is evidence-based, right? Yes, yes, as a course. starting point, yes. exactly. Yes, yes. You say once you get complications in or around your implants, then we get in the gray area. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so that's one, evidence-based. What else? Over treatment, as Jota has said. Yeah. You cannot extract maintainable teeth. I mean, dental implants are an amazing tool to replace a missing tooth. Exactly. But it should never be the first choice of therapy to treat teeth with a compromised perio or a restorative uh, prognosis. Never? Like, what if I've been to the dentist many times and I somehow I can't but control, that, I can't that, fix? You know, that was kind of one of the cases that was brought up actually during the session. A young patient that had some gastric problems and didn't like her teeth. The teeth were non-periodontally involved had some rampant decay. They did have decay because of her gastric problems, but the patient asked the actual surgeon whether he would extract all the teeth to place dental implants on. And in an attempt, according to that dentist, to save the patient money, all the teeth were extracted, implants were placed, and in a very young patient, to us, that is uh, mutilation in a way. Right. So strong words, but you say maybe even the motivation was, was, was good. Eh? If you talk about that, mm. I want to save you money. I yes. want to save yes. you a life in the dentist office. Yes. Yet this is way too far to extract healthy teeth to replace. That's, what, that's the message I understand. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as dentist, implantologist, it's not only a matter of performing a good surgical approach. It's also a matter of educating our patients. 
And even though a patient may request tooth extraction or, or may request something that is not ethically driven, us as dentists may draw the, the red line and say, no, I'm not treating you because I'm not going to go and jump to, into this step. And the, the issue that arises with that, and, and again, some of these dentists believe that, is that this is happening so much in some areas of the world that if I don't do it, somebody else will. Mm -hmm. So they end up Heard accepting to help the patient to do this type of treatments. And I think there is a, you know, there is a very red line onto what we should be doing and what not. And I think that that was kind of like the I don't know, driving uh, of the session and when it went around. Exactly. And the middle part of your title, the surgical approach, mm -hmm. is because you're specifically addressing the surgeons who are able to extract the teeth and say, well, before you do that, think twice. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to give a, a negative message and, and tell that uh, the people that everyone is doing uh, wrong things. Uh, exactly. That's uh, at the end, we still have a dentalist patients that they have lost all their teeth. We don't know the reason. We don't know if it's a, if it was a dentist-driven decision or or a pathological uh, advanced uh, mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also have uh, patients with very advanced disease that in which we cannot save their teeth, and uh, and then we need to go for clear. full large then there's, then, restoration. Then there's a medical, a clear medical reason mm -hmm. why you do it, and not aesthetics mm -hmm. or comfort or cost. Absolutely. And, and, and the thing is that the, a lot of patients are now pressuring a lot on, yes, I want all my teeth taken How out. How come? How come? Where does this drive come from? I think it's become, in some areas of the world, a bit of a trend. It seems to be maybe more cost effective for that patient to extract all the teeth and have right. full arches Keep instead of doing... Keep them nicely white and everything. Well, they beautiful still turn new teeth. yellow, it's, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a very complicated thing that's happening, but the reality is that, you know, the belief is that saving teeth as much as we can is the better option, right? Is there a, a besides the ethical argument, which should be enough eh, of the over treatment, is, is there a medical or biological reason why it's actually preferable to keep the teeth? Or is it, is it mainly still the over treatment thing, don't take something out that's healthy? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, it, natural teeth are better than implants in any yeah, day. You know, they are biology, they're what we have, they, they work very well. And we know, even though implant therapy is evidence-based, that implants have their issues too. And these issues, the earlier you start, the more often you're going to see them. So. Yeah, that's it. If you start in a younger patient, you have more years that potential complications could emerge. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Clear. Yeah, and the treatment of these complications is going to be much cheaper around teeth than implants, ah. mm -hmm. much more predictable. And as I've said many times to my patients, by extracting a tooth and placing an implant, the only thing you are going to avoid is caries, because titanium is not going to develop a caries. Mm -hmm. But the other stuff, we have been talking in other congresses about pre-implantitis, these are frequent, the treatment is not as predictable as, as around teeth. So we need to bear this in mind. Exactly. Clear. Uh and let's, let's stay away from the word warning, but a clear message of wisdom, right? That, that, or, or caution, perhaps even, yeah. And, and don't get us wrong, you know, there are times where it's fully appropriate to go and do the full extractions, and we saw beautiful cases from the presenters exactly. today when that was the right thing to do. And, yeah. uh, and, and many of the congresses before, but, I, but what I sense is that you see there, there seems to be a societal trend mm -hmm. where this becomes more normalized, and we as dentist community should not run after the carrot altogether, right? Take some sense and wisdom. I see one of your speakers, Georg from Austria, also talked about the indications for bone resection. Mm -hmm. What area, wh where, what happens there? Sometimes to perform implant therapy and make it, let's say, better, even better aesthetically, sometimes there is a need to reduce bone to do resection of the bone. Um, but, you know, what George did was, what, what he did was really explain when this was the right thing to do, when it shouldn't be done so much, and kind of like get into that topic as to whether resection is a good time and when and when not. So yeah, so it's, it's just another application of the same principle. Mm -hmm. Don't overtreat mm -hmm. and know what you're doing and when you're doing it. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, and I, I think he also showed us very beautiful how 
even in cases in which we need to be a little bit more receptive in terms mm -hmm. of, of bone reduction, we can do it minimally invasive. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we don't need to raise big flaps, uh, be very aggressive. Yeah. So still we have cases in which we can do it very gently and, and the outcome is going to be also very nice with mm -hmm. better patient uh, reported outcomes. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I can imagine that the term minimal invasive dentistry seems to be echoing around this Congress as well. I hear it now again. So let's look forward. We go away from Milan, we go back to the clinic or we go back to research. Mm -hmm. What do you hope the participants or you yourself are taking away from this session? What do you hope they change once they get back into practice? I think they, they, got, they got shown some very nice protocols as to how to be minimally invasive when taking the teeth out to do a full arch implant rehabilitation. Tiziano showed that very nicely. I also think that George uh, showed very well you know, how to reduce the bone if needed, minimally invasive, as, as Nacho said. And then we had uh, Dominic that expressed you know, his ethical concerns or the ethical concerns that, that we all should have in our decision-making process when we are treating our patients. So Exactly, so hopefully that is all stacked on each other. What, what do you take away, Ignacio? Yeah, I would encourage everyone to, to look to every case individually. So we're treating patients, we're not treating teeth, we're not treating mouths, so we're treating a specific patient. So we need to listen to the patient, we need to educate if it's needed, and then we need to select our treatment First, based on evidence. Every treatment should be evidence-based. Mm -hmm. And then we need to uh, see the patient demands and, and try to merge everything. But we should not consider every patient as a, as a unit because every patient is unique and, and, and we need to take that into consideration. Yeah, so a call for a more personalized approach, less standardization. Mm -hmm. However, I'm triggered by your word, we should spend some time on educating the patients. Now, obviously, and not only med uh, de dental professionals, but also medical professionals, doctors, PAs, everybody is dealing with Dr. Google Oof. or Dr. Social Media. Mm. So now this patient is in your chair. Mm. Yeah, it's nice you tried to educate me, but I have the internet and I've, I've seen that it's possible. Everybody's doing it. Mm. Have you experienced or found an, an, a way or an argument to actually get into the conversation with this convinced patient or client or person? I mean, I, I personally feel that patients come much more informed than they used to, for sure. And especially, you know, I practice in, in London and in Spain. I find it that in London, where I practice, they really come with an encyclopedia in their head and even more and more in Spain, too. But at the end of the day, I think it is our responsibility as their, you know, treat medical, you know, uh, professional that is going to treat them to guide them into what we believe is evidence based, as Nacho said, can work long term and is the most minimal invasive treatment for them to be successful. Um, it's on our hands at the end to decide whether to do. Yeah, I understand, or Jose, but so what do you do? I'm now in your chair and I, I know what I want. I say, what do you mean you can't extract? I've seen extract super simple, I've, give me an implant. I've referred many patients away that have oh, yeah. come to me and said, I would like to have all my teeth taken out and you can do teeth in a day, so-called teeth mm -hmm. in a day. You can mm -hmm. come and get new beautiful teeth and that's what I want. I've referred them away. I, I don't do so that. I'm so, sure. So you make a personal leadership choice where you say, no, this is, this is not for me. It's fine you want it, but not with me. And I give you a strong advice. Don't do it. If I strongly believe that yeah. that case is not a candidate for that, yes, yeah. definitely. And for you, Ignacio, any practical advice on how to deal with these stubborn patients? I mean, the, the, the good thing, uh, and seeing it from a positive perspective, is that most of the patients rely on you. Yeah. They, yeah, come, yeah. Trust. They, they come to you and, yeah. and they place... It's not as bad as I depicted now. Yes, yes. yes. And, and they play the trust on, on you. So that's the, the positive thing. Then we may have the, the, the other uh, opposite patient that it's the patient that thinks that knows everything mm -hmm. and that uh, try to, to push in your decision. So I think it's a matter of... of becoming a leader in that specific mm -hmm. situation and and at the end letting the patient know that he or she has selected you. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have not selected him or her. So I think we need to face that with sometimes difficult, but the good thing is that it's, it's not common. 
Exactly, exactly, exactly. Trust, it's not common. trust is, a, is a very important word. This, these patients are coming to us because they trust in what we do and they trust in our knowledge. And that's when we start treating them. So generally speaking, you can guide your patients very well as to what they should be doing once they're in your chair. So to answer your question, most likely I will be able to convert that patient and tell them, look, this is what's right, follow me. And it's very unlikely that they'll go and get a treatment done somewhere else. Somewhere it else. can happen and it has yeah. happened. And it can happen and then you say, well, that's okay. Yeah, and, yeah. St and still today, uh, most of the patients, even we invest a lot in, in internet, in Google and in all that stuff, most of the patients comes mouth to mouth. So mm. they, they, they really trust on you and, and they have pretty good positive feedback of, of you as a dentist. So that's the good uh, stuff. Exactly. <laughs> I'm happy uh, to hear that even in dental marketing, mouth to mouth mm -hmm. is the thing that still works best. Very fitting uh, for your professional. <laughs> All right. Um, gentlemen, I'm very glad that you uh, shared a little bit about the background of this session. I'm, I'm very excited to go watch it. Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you, Jose. And then if you want to learn more, go find out the full 90 minute recording of this exciting session with the three different speakers in the Milan online library and go educate yourself based on science.